This is Dr. August Kunkel in his teaching on the Books of Chronicles. This is session number 16, Conflicted Kingdom. The Chronicler has presented to us Solomon's kingdom as a kingdom of peace. Uh, he is the one that uh, represents the ideal of what God's rule is supposed to be. And so the Chronicler's presentation is to tell us that this is what God wishes and what God wants. The actual reality of things is not always what we would want the ideal to be. In fact, it most often is not what we would want the ideal to be. And uh, as uh, the Chronicler's readers well knew, and as we well know from reading the story of Solomon, uh, his reign did not end in peace. It actually ended very conflicted uh, with the result that the kingdom divided. The Chronicler never explicitly refers to the division of the kingdom, though clearly all of his readers must be aware that it has taken place in order to understand his presentation of the reigns that are going to follow. Uh, but the reigns that immediately follow uh, well in illustrate the conflicts that had developed. Uh, the Chronicler also uses them to show how humbling yourself and seeking God's face will preserve his mercy and will enable you to experience his mercy. But from this point on, after Solomon, what we really have is a story of uh, kings in conflict in one way or another. And though the chronicler is very approving of some of these kings, uh, virtually all of them have failures of one kind or another, and often there is great conflict, uh, and uh, the chronicler does make clear the that uh, Israel, the north, was often at war with Judah in the south, exactly the way that we have it in Kings. So our next section in the book of Chronicles is the time from Solomon all the way to the time of Hezekiah. Uh, the, this time period uh, includes the exile of the north, uh, by the Assyrians, uh, which the chronicler has referred to earlier on in his work, but doesn't explicitly mention here. And then it also talks about the way in which things did degenerate in Judah all the way until we get to the time of Ahaz, where uh, the temple is desecrated completely. <coughs> but what we want to look at now is the first two kings that follow Solomon. The chronicler is going to focus exclusively on the kings of Judah. Uh, Yehud, of course, was in some sense a representation of Jerusalem and a representation of the kings in Jerusalem. Uh, so the chronicler is interested in Jerusalem as the place of the temple where God is to be worshipped, where his kingdom is to be represented. And so we have uh, here, beginning in chapter 10, the recognition of the division of the monarchy and uh, the return of Jeroboam. Jeroboam had, as we mentioned, fled to Egypt for his own safety uh, because he was in conflict with Solomon. And none of that mentioned by the chronicler, but the chronicler does mention the fact that uh, Jeroboam returns and uh, that uh, we have here the north uh, reversing the affirmation of David. Uh, remember that the chronicler presented to David with all of the warriors saying, we are yours, O David, and our future is in you. Well, here, all those tribes from the north are saying the opposite. Uh, their experience under Solomon has come to be harsh, and they are saying, what portion do we have in David? 
uh, what future do we have in David? What future do we have in Jerusalem? So the mantra has, in that sense, been reversed. Uh, we referred earlier to the conscripted labor, and the person in charge of that conscripted labor was Adoram. Uh, so uh, Rehoboam, in seeking to establish his uh, rule uh, as a successor of Solomon, had gone to Shechem. Uh, that was a big central city in order to have the northern tribes affirm him. But as we know the story, uh, they, they were very discontent with the levels of taxation and particularly with the fact of conscripted labor. You know, uh, I complain a lot about uh, taxation. Uh, I've sometimes been told I should be grateful that I can pay taxes because it means I have some income. And uh, it, means that, it means that uh, I probably also derive some benefits from these taxes. And I realize that these things are true. Uh, but the taxes seem disproportionate to the income, always, in my case at least. And, and uh, I don't uh, seem to see the benefits being used at all the way that I would like to see them be used. But it's nothing like uh, what these people were experiencing in which you actually leave your own work and the pursuit of your own making of a living to go and directly work for the government in their particular project. Uh, that's 100% that's taxation, which is not something that I've ever experienced. And of course, it might only be for a portion of the year, but that's still onerous, very onerous. Even if it's three months out of uh, 12, that's onerous. And so there was great resistance to this taxation. And uh, when Rehoboam decided that uh, uh, he was going to continue the taxation, in fact, maybe increase the taxation to what Solomon had done, uh, there was a complete revolt uh, and Adoram was stoned. Uh, and of course, there would have been war. But here the chronicler presents us with a prophet. His name is Shemaiah. And uh, the uh, prophet, in uh, giving his uh, speech, averts the war with Israel because he does remind them that they are brothers. So, with uh, the essential division of the kingdom at this point in time, Rehoboam is king only in Judah. Uh, but uh, as king in Judah, the chronicler has quite a bit to say about him in terms of the way he fortified the cities and the way in which he had the blessing of a large household. So uh, though Rehoboam uh, in one sense is responsible for the uh, division of the kingdom, as we're going to see, the chronicler holds Jeroboam more responsible for that division than he does Rehoboam. And uh, we see that especially in the reign of Rehoboam's successor uh, in the reign of Abijah. Uh, here we see uh, that uh, there is uh, war again about to break out between Israel and Judah. As we know from the Book of Kings, this uh, was a kind of a feature uh, after the division of the kingdom between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Uh, but here we have the speech by the king. This is one of the most important speeches in the Book of Chronicles, uh, chapter 13, uh, verses uh, 4 through 12. Uh, because Abijah the king really lays out the options of God's ideal and what God wants, so that this, is, this should not be reduced to political well-being, but it should come back to uh, the promises and should come back to what God wants for his kingdom. And so he says that rash scoundrels prevailed over an inexperienced Rehoboam. Uh, now, this passage has actually been read in two ways. That is, it is a little bit ambiguous. Um, who did the rash scoundrels prevail over? Did they prevail over Rehoboam or did they prevail over Jeroboam? Uh, if they 
uh, the chronicler seems to say, really what happened here is that it was Rehoboam who was inexperienced. He didn't realize how he, handled the, how he had to handle this taxation question. And uh, the result of his uh, inexperience was that uh, there was this division. And uh, Jeroboam is the person who's responsible for that division because he took advantage of this situation in order to make himself king in the north. So there really was opportunity here for reconciliation, but Jeroboam, in his own political ambitions, uh, pursued his own power over Israel and the tribes of the north. So uh, what we have then is uh, the judgment of Jeroboam. Uh, Abijah, the uh, king of the south, is able to restore his northern borders. And the northern borders, of, of course, are usually represented by Bethel, that area around Bethel, a little bit to the north and to the west of Jerusalem. That formed the dividing line uh, between the two kingdoms. And uh, Jer Abijah restored those borders, and uh, Jeroboam died in judgment. And uh, so Abijah comes to be one of those kings who, in the chronicler's estimation, uh, is uh, exemplary. He's exemplary in terms of the way in which he intervenes, the way in which he pre prevents a war between the two nations, and the way in which uh, he preserves the reign of Judah and the territory of Judah. This is Dr. August Kunkel in his teaching on the books of Chronicles. This is session number 16, Conflicted Kingdom.